everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Shoe Podcast, the only secret podcast that is banned from Toyota Thon. I'm your co host, Ryan Landry. I'm your co host, Tanner Young. It's not a good time to buy a Tundra. I'll tell you that right now. Dude, okay, get out of my head. I literally have been looking up. That's like the next vehicle I think about getting is a Tundra. Yeah. So it hurts. We'll get into that and more. But first of all, thank you everyone for tuning into another episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, as you just saw the little graphic at the bottom, Take a quick second to hit that subscribe button. Really just takes a second and greatly helps us. If mm. you're listening to this on any of your favorite podcast providers, platforms, go ahead and follow it or subscribe, whatever the action is there. But just get tuned in so you don't miss another one of these because the on. boys are back in town. My man is back from the beach looking taller, darker, and handsomer than ever. Don't look at the tops of my feet. They're extremely sunburned <laughs> and itchy because they're I'm healing. Not- I'm not looking at the tops of your feet for several reasons, but I will add that to my list. Now you got eight. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back. So yeah, for everyone that didn't catch it, last week's episode, we filmed a week early because you were at the beach, uh, mm. but now we're finally reunited and it feels so good. That it does. It was weird. Uh, I did I did miss home. You know, I missed all the, the lush, you know, driving all the interstate, coming back. Well, I didn't miss the roads. I didn't miss the roads. No, no. It's like, you know, I probably paid like half my mortgage in tolls while I was out in Florida. But let me tell you what, yeah. money nice to roads. good use. S- yeah. Smooth ride. Yeah. Smooth ride. Might as we well be learn in the Jetsons. From them. <laughs> I don't know that like most people would like agree with you and be like, yo, Florida is the closest thing to the Jetsons we have. Just the roads. Just, just the, the roads. roads. If you just put those little blinders on and ignore everything yeah. else about Florida, very similar to the Jetsons. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Had a good time on the beach, though. Did you end up buying another pair of Crocs? Almost, no. So they mm. did have the uh, the new Croc silhouette, I guess, that we had, we had covered. Um, mm. Okay. I cannot remember the name of it, even though they had a giant... Um, you have you have Crocs? Display. And you have Salehi Benberry Crocs, and you have other Crocs. And this falls and in that third have, category of yeah. other Crocs. So I, I almost did actually end up picking up the, the newer Crocs just because... Uh, they did have the green that I really like, more of like mm-hmm. that woodsy green. Um, in person, more of an odd look. I think because just when you think of a Crocs, you do think of like the the whole opening. Um, mm-hmm. So it was kind of weird. Uh, funny funny story. Did not end up picking up Crocs, um, but my son turns out he loves giblets, and he picked just an eyeball, an eyeball giblet. One, <laughs> and it's a realistic eyeball too. It's not yeah. cartoony. It looks like a yeah. prosthetic. And then, like, you know, the typical shark dinosaur stuff. Right. So I'm like, okay, I got a weird kid. And love it. Went back to go pick up the uh, Croc Shine for That's a thing? Ashley. Oh, yeah. So it's it's Croc Shine. They, and let me tell you what, it's definitely a scam for sure. Because it comes I'm in like sure. this big thing. Mm-hmm. I'm probably spending way too much time on this, but it's funny. No, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Comes in a big thing. Sponge is this big. There's no liquid in the thing. So I'm like, why is there, why is the case? I don't know. So here's how they get you this. So I actually bought a pair of Crocs. They're like platform Crocs, but it's like mm-hmm. a giant air bubble mm-hmm. um, as okay. the sole. And they're like, hey, you should get the little Croc shine because it looks good. So they only do one shoe or one Croc. Oh, so I'm like, like at the counter, they're doing the demonstration. They're like, yeah. look, it, it, yeah. you know, yada, yada. They so I'm do like, that. Okay. So you have to buy it because now you I'm only like, have no, one cleat shoe. No, get no. out of here. Get out of here. Well, next day she's walking around her Crocs. And I'm like. Well, you, you got some dusty looking Crocs. I got to go down by the Crocs line because you got one looking fresh, the right. other one not. Well, I get down. My dad comes, I mean, running in after me. He gets in there and he's like, I got to buy some giblets because um, Boogie loves them. And he's Beats like, I'm going to put some on my door. So I'm like, okay. So he's, I mean, got a handful, massive handful. So I go to the counter and I'm like, hey, do y'all do deals for the giblets? And he's like, yeah, you buy you know, by nine, get four free by 12, get six free. Doesn't mention the final one, which is if you buy 14, you get 12. Oh, that's close to buy one, get one free. Yeah. So my but dad uh, sp- spent probably over a hundred dollars or almost a hundred dollars just on croc giblets. <laughs> 
Yeah, that story was incredible and warranted every minute of it that you took up. There you go. Like a lot of people that do growth go. strategies on like YouTube or whatever would be like, your hook <laughs> needs to be in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Our intro alone is 30 seconds. So like that's out the window. But whatever. We're going to hit him with a real left turn when we tell him what we're talking about. Well, exactly. But that story it, was worth no it. No idea. There yeah, you go. That was really good. <laughs> so that was my beach experience. <laughs> that was really good. It's my dad dropping a bag. I love it. My non-beach yeah. experience. Uh, I finally went to Shake Back Sunday for the first time in a long time. Just happened to hey. work with scheduling and everything like that that I hadn't been able to go. But it was fun. I went in Baton Rouge. Way smaller crowd than any other one I'd ever seen. But I think mm-hmm. a lot of the releases for this month, despite our last episode, link at the top of the screen right here, uh, talking you. about all the heat coming out this month, they didn't really have a lot of it uh, available mm. for play for the month of May. But... Let me tell you what, and I haven't told you this yet. For you and I, it's a classic story. For most people that have listened for a long time, it's a classic story. If you haven't heard it, it's got to be, it's in the first two episodes, maybe the first zero or one, where we talk about the shake back we went to, where the lost, uh, not the lost and found, the LA to Chicago Jordan ones. Classic story. Go look it up. It's a very old episode. Won't be on YouTube. Um, But so this shake back was not the first one for me since then, but it might be the first one since then where I've actually played because normally I just go to hang out and I'm not really mm. trying to get anything. And I played cornhole and playing on Sunday makes you look back on that story and be like, I would not have changed anything about it. Cause let me tell you who's <laughs> not very good at cornhole. <laughs> this guy. Uh, yeah. Didn't took play me, out well. Took me several, several laps to finally sink one in there to the point where go. like, you know, the line of people who are repeating is getting shorter and shorter, and it's just me and a couple mm-hmm. of kids, and you're like, I hope mm. they still have shoes by the time I get to the front. But I was just <laughs> laughing and lying, thinking to myself about that story and just telling myself, okay, yeah, would not change anything about it. Yeah. Hey, so, look, you got to you, you know, you gotta get the right, you get the loft, it's a spin. It's a skill. Yeah. It's a but skill. You think it's just a bag full of beans. You but, think so. You think so. Mm. There's a technique to it. But, yeah, exactly. real good time, really fun especially um, going into the topic that we're going to talk about today. I did not realize how much I missed a event where you get to hang out with other sneakerheads, but also like, Hey, how about everyone here has a pretty fair shot at getting shoes coming out? Boy, novel idea, boy. I did not realize how much I'd miss that until I got that. So <laughs> shout out secret <laughs> politics. I'm really in love with you guys right now. Um, I mean, always, but like right now more than especially ever. now. Yeah. Honeymoon. But anyways, taste. What we're going to talk about here, Nike's woes from leaks Oof. to release. They've had a they've been down bad the past couple of weeks here. They've been not been shining and putting their best foot forward on social media. Um, yeah. We'll peek behind the curtain for a second here because I told Tanner right before he hopped on. The episode we originally had lined up for this week was uh, explaining what is dot swoosh, Nike's virtual efforts. I spent mm. a day researching on it, and I still don't feel confident enough to talk about it. So this episode... Turns out hard to figure it, out. It turns out NFT is still confusing for uh, <laughs> elder millennials here. But um, this episode, a little bit of back pocket. There's no visuals. We're not switching screens. We don't have fancy graphics. Going to be a pretty impromptu conversation here. But it felt pretty timely with everything going on. So if you're not up to speed past couple of weeks have been rough on Nike. There have been some mm. less than stellar releases on their sneakers app. There have been some leaks of upcoming projects that they're not too happy about. And that's probably actually where we're going to start it here. So first story that we want to talk about, it was probably uh, last week or week before, by the time this episode comes out, one of the bigger Instagram leak accounts, I think it was private selection, um, posted about an upcoming dunk. 2023, not that crazy of a concept, right? Leaks, no. we're seeing stuff coming out. Uh, but they posted an upcoming collaboration dunk with Crenshaw Skate Club, uh, which is like a, a skate club and streetwear brand out of California, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't have the graphics here on the screen because it's about to, it's about to, this whole story is basically it. And so anyways, private selection posted, Nike SB leaves a comment on it saying, and I quote, Imagine getting the opportunity to create a dunk only to have an account named Master Chef Ian leak it with no context to the story. Regardless of how you feel, and we're going to talk about how we feel, the punchline of an account named Master Chef Ian is like Shots. 
it, just like the thoughts of like a multi-billion dollar brand, just like a quick knife twist at the last second of like, by the way, you are goofy with this name. Shots are absolutely on fired. Yeah. And it's not even catching strays because that's who they had it intended for. But yeah. Yeah. Nike SB not so stoked about releases of upcoming collabs coming out. So I'll pause for a second because I've been talking for a lot here. Did you see the post and like their comment on it in real time? Did you see all the other blogs picking it up? And what were your thoughts when you kind of first saw it? I saw, I guess I saw just like on the Instagram explore page and I mm-hmm. don't even know why I like clicked on it. Cause I feel like the, the, the first picture I saw was just like a screen cap of like what looked like Instagram comments. Yeah. Which normally is a telltale sign. Something juicy is there. So right. I, piqued my interest i went ahead and clicked onto it and i i did kind of scroll through i didn't spend a lot of time like reading through the things i just saw kind of the a lot of the comments kind of going back and forth on that post of uh Mm -hmm. you know was it right was it wrong who's that who's you know is nike overreacting or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. um but i did see that (laughs) nike sb being like taking a shot at at someone's instagram name which i mean yeah, sure. I mean, it's funny not, enough. You know, Go for it's, it. It's, it's nothing crazy. So yeah. I, I did see it, I guess, not necessarily real time, because like I said, I saw someone mm-hmm. just posting the like the thread of like the screen caps, I guess, of Nike SB, because it seems like they, they didn't just comment that one time. Uh, I just saw the one comment that they were just talking the one about. comment. There might have been more okay. that. I didn't go dig up the original post and really like sort gotcha. through the comments, but yeah, maybe it might have so. just been other people responding. Maybe so. Um, yeah. To Nike SB thing. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was, it it is crazy. It, it is weird that I guess Nike SB would make the comment, yeah, because it's not like leaks are unfamiliar to the sneaker community, right. yeah. You, you know, I mean, multiple times. Not only is it just like leaks or things like that. Like, I mean, there's been a history of just shoes being like showing up on ebay or something like that and it's like right yeah, you know yeah. not you know nike being like well hold up now who's <laughs> who's got that sample and it's right, like exactly some random guy in iowa now it's out now yeah yeah so i think that's part of what makes it tough and we'll kind of talk about this from a few different angles here i will say one of my favorite takes i saw on this was a tweet from matt welty of complex saying that Nike SB, like the rebellious, defiant brand and branch of <laughs> Nike being a hall monitor, all-time corny yeah. move, you know, just like, of like, how yeah. are you, I, I don't know, so anti-establishment, and they'd be like, if you guys could not leak the stuff, that could, would be cool. Could you please? Um, so, I don't know. Leaks in general, I don't have that much of an issue with. I will tell you, and it doesn't even rub me the wrong way but the stuff that i don't get excited about is like you know when you see like it's normally the jordan brand stuff and they're like check out this upcoming jordan 5 that's going to be happening summer of 2024 and you're like mm. you're talking like 15 months from now like who cares <laughs> who yeah ca- i don't get that ex- that's way too far out to get excited about you know and i think the weird thing that nike had was maybe saying like without context for the story right not exactly to, like I don't think people were going to look at a shoe and be like, oh, I'm going to write mm-hmm. the shoe off because I don't know the backstory or why it's made or all these things mm-hmm. like that. Like, I know between us and right. I would say probably most of our listeners that, yeah, like knowing the behind the scenes and the story behind a shoe does make the shoe more important to us and can mm-hmm. have that. I would probably assume that majority of people who are into sneakers do not care about the backstory. Yeah, I would agree with you on that because I was watching a live stream from Roscoe, who's a really popular sneaker YouTuber, around the time that this story broke. And he was asking his chat in real time, do any of you care about stories with sneakers anymore? And like resounding no, resounding no of people being like, I do not care about the story. Yeah, which again, for like for you and I is like someone like talking gibberish and walking backwards. And you're like, I'm sorry, what are (laughs) what are you doing with sneakers then? But yeah. yeah, it's the way of the world. Most people do not care about the story. Yeah, and, and I, I I don't know for you, but I mean, like, for me, a good story won't make me want a bad shoe, but it will make me like a bad shoe. Mm. Um, So I, I wouldn't say that a story for me is, is, is like, I don't like this shoe at all, but the backstory behind it is cool, and I'll get it. For me, it's more of, 
I can appreciate this shoe now. I may not like it. I may not want to buy it, but a good backstory will make me be like, you know what? I will stand up for this shoe. Um, yeah, I think probably the best example I can give you, I'll turn my head for a second here. Nope, we're going this way. The social status chocolate milk dunk mids is one that I think about where I'm like, not a shoe I wear often, if at all. Mm. I've probably worn it less than 10 times because like the colors on it, not really my thing. But for me, a really good example of like the story and the packaging was so good that I was like, I just got to have this shoe, you know, and the materials yeah. on it are really nice. But again, just like not the color combination really and style I would wear a lot. But I say that to kind of give my take on. Yeah, for me, sometimes the story and the uh, the social media rollout from the official brand when they do it can like push me over that hump of like, yeah, I want to get those even if like prior to it, I would have sworn to you that I didn't want them. That's fair. I, I, I think a good story, I, I would agree with that. A good story for me is something that like could give me the push of like, yeah, you know what? Okay, I, I will. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, just just interesting. That was the thing that I thought was, was odd about it. I mean, like I can see where Nike SB is coming from of like, hey, this is a big moment, especially if you've never had a shoe to have a collab with obviously, you know, the most... I guess you could say infamous mm -hmm. skateboard shoe company, you know, maybe not, you know, not debating on whether it's the best or not, but I would say mm -hmm. most infamous, most well known. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, I guess I would also see like, Oh, this is kind of a bummer. Like I was, I'm excited that the shoe happened and that it's coming out, but also like to have that impact of being able to like, be like, it's the first mm -hmm. would be kind of cool. Um, I kind of thought about it, I guess kind of in a funny way. It's kind of like, uh, you know, someone else blew out your birthday candles. Ooh, really it's not good a, analogy. It's like not a big deal. And it really doesn't mean anything. Like it's still your birthday. You still got all the gifts. It's still your cake. It's still your day. Mm -hmm. But that final moment, if someone took it away, it's like for some reason you're like, it's a big deal. And it's well, not. It, In retrospect, it's not. But th th this whole thing to me was, was yeah. someone else blowing out your but, birthday candles. And to that analogy, you might justify it. You might be like, but no, 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 no. That was a leak. That was an early in hand. You guys are going to have the official product shots. You're going to mm -hmm. have like the crazy good B-roll. You're going to write really beautiful copy that accompanies it. But to your analogy, you can relight the candles and blow them out again. But like, it's not moment. the same. The it's moment. not the, the same. Moment. Wow. There you clip go. it. Hang on. Quick clip it. Clip <laughs> it. That's a deep moment right there. That one's going on the socials. There you go. So, you know, that's kind of what I thought. Mm. And, and, and that's kind of where I could see how, how you may have like mixed comments on this of like, yeah, why do you care? It's just mm -hmm. a leak. You still got the shoe. It's still going to be great. Mm -hmm. And then the other people will be like, no, like you took away the, the, the moment, the release, right. the aha, you know? So, um, when I will it is say, interesting. yeah, not to, not the humble brag or subtle flex, but Ooh, there you go. Well, well, we can say it. There have been a couple of times, handful of select times where we have been in a position to kind of leak something that's coming out, but yeah. we know the people and our friends with the people, I would dare to say mm -hmm. to know and recognize that is such a big and important moment for them that like, it's yeah. not worth it for us to get our 15 minutes of fame and chase internet clout to t a take away that moment from someone and then b burn those bridges of relationships. It's not worth it. No. Yeah. And, and that's, that's been one of the, and I don't know. It's just like, it's just such a weird thing. Also, like, I mean, it is odd. I mean, like I would say for two, just very <laughs> average run of the meal guys to be in those moments of like, Hey, do you guys want to come see the sample that like a handful of people outside of this company yeah. have seen? It's like, absolutely. And that yeah. giddiness that like just childlike feeling of like being like, you know, all right, cameras are off. Hey, is this happening? And then to hear, yeah. And you're like, Oh, you know, to, to, to waste that on, yeah. a, on a leak just seems weird. And like you said, we, all the people that, that we have had the the pleasure of talking to and who have trusted in us to be like, oh, hey, I can, I'll can i tell you this one little cool small detail. Mm -hmm. To throw that away with people who we're, you know, um, pretty good friends with and, uh, you know, kind of close with, 
just doesn't seem like at all what I would want to. But yeah. again, I would imagine most of these leaks come from like a someone of a someone of a someone. Right. Exactly. Well, and again, it's private selection or Master Chef Ian, whoever that is, leaking the Nike SB and Crenshaw Skate Club collab. I would go out on a limb and say they don't have any personal connection with either of those yeah. brands. So to them, so it's, to like, them it's like, yeah, why, why the hell not? I need internet clout. I'm going to chase it. I'm going to get my likes up for a minute there, which again, I understand why people do it, but yeah, for yeah. us, it's not really something I don't think we'd ever be doing. No, no. And, and no. yeah, I mean, for someone as me, I see it. it a leak doesn't take away how special so the is or, or how much I do or don't want it. Um, mm-hmm. But again, I it's not my shoe. It's right. not my rollout. It's not my product. So I don't have that attachment to it. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting uh, to see. I, I guess, yeah, I guess the main thing is interesting that Nike SB felt the need to comment on this shoe. Yeah. Well, and that's the last thing I kind of want to ask you about this before we move on. Any sympathy for the brand on this one? Like, you know, we can have sympathy for Crenshaw Skate Club. Huge moment yeah, for Yeah, okay, them. yeah, sh- sure. Nike SB, are you shedding any tears for them on this one? No, no, they're they're fine. Um, I'm not, I, I, again, not, to me, it's just You're not like, losing winks of sleep over the multi-billion dollar corporation? <laughs> you heartless monster? Mm, mm. Hey, maybe it's them trying to stand up for their younger brother. You know, Mm -hmm. this, this Crenshaw, you know, be like, Hey, they may not want to say anything, but we've got a big platform. We'll support them. I think it's Um, a good look for them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think it's fine. I don't think it's, it's corny Mm -hmm. for Nike SB. I mean, I guess you could say in the sense of like skaters are typically seen as, as a fringe group out, you know, kind of like break the law type thing. Mm -hmm. And then to be upset that a leak happened, I guess you could say to me, I don't really see it that intensely but i also don't think like nike sb i wouldn't say isn't like the skater brand that's like you know releasing a a cab board or you know mm, anything like that right. so yeah. I, I i wouldn't say they're they have a reputation of like the break the law do what you want right. exactly yeah, and then like that. oh hold on don't do that again <laughs> you on, know hang on, hang on. yeah so yeah uh, i don't see it but no i mean yeah for the multi-billion dollar company nah <laughs> They'll yeah. Be all right. Well, and to that point of like, because the, the argument I saw floating around online was like, if they didn't want leaks, they would control it better. You know, like they would control how the yep. pairs get out or like they would have the official images and copy ready to go earlier and they would control, you know, like they could announce it whenever they want to announce it. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know that I can sympathize so much, but working for a company that is a fraction of of the size of theirs, but still a relatively large company. I could probably pretty safely assume that like whoever at Nike SB that's running the social media or even the entire Nike SB team and department over there does not have full control from like start to finish of like whenever they start design every little thing that happens in the factory and everyone who gets brought in on it, there's just no way to control that, you know? No. And so it, sure you could like really make it closed loop, but then you would again, be posting your official images and product copy. We don't even know how far out we are from that shoe, like seven months out, you know? And yeah, of course they don't want to do that. They announce everything a month, two months before so that it's right at the front of people's minds. They don't get tired of seeing it for so long. So I just don't see that argument of like, they could control that if they wanted to. Yeah, no. And, and I mean, like you said, you got so many people, uh, you know, who who knows where or who leaked it, whether right. it was for, I'm sure, some type of money, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. Um, Because if not, you would leak it on just your personal just to get, yeah, you know, whatever it is. But it's like, hey, I'll sell you this leak for X mm-hmm. amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. Um, But yeah, like you said, there's so many people involved in it. You, there's just no way to control a leak like that. I don't think so. Not really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I guess final verdict seems like an overreaction, seems like a, an odd thing. Also, I guess speaking of like with a social media team, I wonder, you know, was it just some one person who had seen it? I got some leeway like, on it. I'm making this comment. Did, I'm going was there off any, of the comments today. Yeah. I want to see like the, uh, you think Nike's a teams or a. 
Oh, yeah, like what a, internal a communication platform yeah. they're using? Teams seems to be most popular. We're not a Teams company, which kind of surprises me, but mm-hmm. uh, Teams seems to be really popular. Would I want to see that. I want to see that chat teams. log of like, hey, guys, I kind of wrote, wrote up this comment. You know what I mean? What do you think? You know, I, I want to run this by that. you, Chris. Yeah. yeah? Nah, I don't know. Exactly. Tina, can you get on this real quick? Yeah. Uh, we'll move it on uh, kind of the other half of the conversation then that we wanted to have goes from leaks to release. So also within the past couple of weeks, Nike oh. had a re-release of the ever popular lost and found Jordan one highs on their sneakers app. They posted mm. about a week before a teaser on the sneakers app saying, Hey, if we restock these, you know, it was a poll. Would you tell a friend or would you keep it a secret? Um, and so then a week later, They had the quote unquote shock drop on their sneakers app. I mean, a lot of the bigger Instagram and YouTubers picked it up ahead of time of when it was supposed to be. And, you know, people kind of knew ourselves included. So we were trying to enter for it at that time. But app absolutely bugging and glitching out (sighs) to where couldn't even enter the raffle, couldn't submit payment information. I made a little reel Mm. on it. Hey, here's a great time to plug ourselves. Go check that Come reel on. out on our Instagram at shoe podcast on our TikTok at shoe podcast or on YouTube at shoe podcast. You guessed it. Mm. Um, but yeah, just a lot of bad stuff. And so then it was probably last week. Uh, Complex picked up a story and we're going to read a little bit of a snippet here, or there where they talked to someone from the sneakers app that's in uh, development or I don't know, someone from the sneakers app. Uh, and the quote that I pulled here was them saying, quote, We had a challenge with a third party scaling issue, which basically prevented us from being able to handle the traffic for that particular launch. Okay, sure. 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 Um, And, uh, you know, sure, maybe that is what happened. Sure. But I don't know, like myself, and I'm sure I could speak for you and most sneakerheads are just like the thing that's more infuriating than not winning the raffle is not being able to enter the raffle to not even feel like you got a chance to play worse. I think worse than losing the raffle. Oh, I'm surprised you're pondering this. I would have thought easy. Yes. Well, it, so it depends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're going by saying not entering, if you're in a sense of like how the, the sneakers app is, yes. It yeah. is more frustrating to not enter in the way that you yeah. not enter through the sneakers app because it's constant crashes and things like mm-hmm. that. I, or if it's like one of those things where it's like a, you know, I don't know, not really a first come first serve, but you know, like, I guess, yeah, it would be nice to just show up. Let's say you, you show up to, uh, you know, ruckus or, or politics, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. You say, Hey, I want to raffle. They go, oh, sorry, the raffle. Actually, we we're out. You you kind of you kind of miss your shot. I would go like, dang, but okay. Mm. To me, I rather that than enter mm. and get the loss. Because if I enter, there's there's a, there's a chance. Mm. I got the chance to win. But if I can't even enter, then I'm like, All right, well, pff, loss is know. loss. Mm. L's and L. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. The sneakers app, especially so for for this one to talk about this one specifically. I mean, it was constant refresh, and then you. Because then you got to sit there, you'd be like, oh, do I close out of the app? Yeah. If I close out of the app, is that it's the it's the yeah. cat in the box there scenario? The thi- if I, yeah. No one know, knows. Yeah. You, know, you know, and, and it was this one was so painful because it just kept constantly being like it kept giving me the thing like the, like it was processing my pain. I was like unable to process. I'm like try the other card. Right. Unable to process. Yeah. No. Try this card. Like I'm try just the like, other address. Yeah. I, Everything. Exactly. You're Through you're checking addresses, checking numbers, and it's just like. It's so frustrating. And then finally, whenever I was like, okay, let me just restart the app real quick. Let me close out and get back in. And then at that time, oh, drawing closed. And I'm like, yeah, what happened in this yeah. last second to to finally do it? And it's just uh, so frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, obviously to hear that from, from Nike is just one of the most just like, I d- just seems like the, a lie. Well, and of course, it's a third party scaling issue. It's not a fir- it's not something in house. It's someone else. This yeah. other provider, this other software service that we use, it's their issue that had it. we had everything under control, but they weren't prepared for this. Which also Nike, when when has this never not a problem? Right, with exactly. Your releases on sneakers. The, exa- it is this always is, a problem. What was um, man? Oh, we talked about it too on one of the episodes of like. 
it was within the last year or two. I remember there being the first big one where like you couldn't even enter the draw. I, it must have been Travis Scott something. It might have been. It must I have been do one remember of the past that. Travis yeah. Scott. Where it where was it the first one where like, it was like it's it's kind of the same error issue. I mean, it's the same one they've had since then mm-hmm. on every big release like this. Um and you know, the complex article goes to talk about how like of course they do stress testing on the system and like they test these scenarios where however million many millions of people try to log in to get these shoes, but I'm just like but are you though? Like I've like I've like the current like uh Exactly I think you should leave me where I'm like, You sure about that? Are you sure about that? Because I'm like, like I so you just, did all the stress tests, but then and they all pass, but then for some reason when the release happened when it's real people and there's well, lots what, what, now. Yeah. Yeah, like what 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 happened here? Um and I and I think that's probably the biggest thing that, that sneakers they don't test for when it comes to a stress test, and obviously they don't have bot protection. Mm-hmm. is that a bot can sit there and click a thousand times mm-hmm. in a second. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you're, you're planning on if it's real people, but you're not going to put it to where it's like maybe a couple thousand people are using yeah. bots and all those thousands of bots are clicking the draw and things like that. Yeah. Thousands of times within 10 seconds, obviously it's going to crash. Have you, uh, have you entered a recent sneakers release? Not the, not this one that you weren't even able to enter, but has there been a release recently where you actually entered and you were like, it was drawing and you were pinning and waiting for results? Yes. Uh, I think actually the first, maybe the first lost and found. Um, I don't know if what, okay. So what I'm referring to is that recently, I don't remember if this was in place. Then there's now a screen where instead of the typical pending screen where it's like you are in line or something like that, they mm-hmm. now have a screen that says something like we are removing bot entries. Like that's been an update. No. The, okay, so that's that's why I thought it's only been in the past couple of months. So they're now being a little bit more. I mean, you call it transparent, whatever. They're now at least telling us that they are removing bot entries, and they talk about that in the complex article as well. That of the millions of bot entries they get on each release and how effective they are at removing ninety eight percent of them, uh, which still leaves millions, but not millions, but maybe hundreds of thousands. But. Mm-hmm. Um, are, I don't know. Are bots illegal or no? Um, that's a great question for the, uh, I feel like I'm on the like not legal advice subreddit right now, uh, <laughs> but they should be, they feel it. I don't know. Cause I would imagine it, you know, obviously if they're, if they're, I, I don't think they would be illegal is what I would yeah. really say. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's anything that would make it illegal. Um, which is, why I would assume Nike really hasn't done anything to actually like get rid of bots. Yeah. Um, rather than just to try and make it to where um, bots are well, I- least effective. Uh, but also you have people like, you know, I would imagine there's teams of people who are constantly updating these bots because they make money off it. It's their job. Yeah. It is their job yeah. to be like, break down the, the sneakers code that they just, they just tried to release updated to where this bot seems mm-hmm. less like a an AI and more like a person. And every time you try to figure out something against it, mm-hmm. there's only so little you can do in an app. Yeah. That to combat to combat that. Well and it's not just the app because you can enter sneakers from desktop as well, which is I think mm-hmm. how a lot of the bots actually run. I think they run on desktop, not on app, but gotcha. Uh, I'm they might run on app as well. I might be completely wrong about that. But um all of this kind of comes to a head with like people. So obviously everyone on the internet is like an, a genius, right? Everyone's like an armchair expert. Of course. Um, of course. So people have lots of suggestions of how Nike could deal with this. Um, and it could be interesting for us to go back and forth on those and discuss like a few of them that are good. But here's like, here's the sad reality of it, which like you and I have talked about before, but I will say once oh, again, boy. because I'm on my soapbox right now, which is that, there are never enough pairs to meet the demand. So at yeah. the end of the day, someone has to lose. And in, in this case, it's lots of people that have to lose. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But there are not enough pairs to meet the demand because Nike does not want everyone to have this shoe. That is like, oh, yeah, that's just like, it's the obvious it's the elephant in the room. Right. But it's like, it's the frustrating thing about like people using any of their mental energy to brainstorm how they could combat this it's all 
really sadly, like that's the thing that upsets me actually is like, it's such a fruitless conversation because I genuinely don't believe Nike's all that interested in it. Oh yeah. No, Nike, Nike doesn't care. Um, for sure. I mean, product gets moved. They don't care. They've, they've, they've sold their inventory. They don't care who it goes to and things like that. I would say that I think people do understand obviously that, you know, for every hundred people, they've made two pairs. Right. Um, so it is definitely an odds game. It's very much like gambling. The odds are stacked so far against you, yet you just keep going back and back. Yeah. The frustrating thing that I have and that I would imagine most people have is when you see the Instagram pictures and they're just in a room Yeah. with boxes. You know, they've boxes, got yeah. 30 to 50 pairs or whatever it may be, and it's obvious resellers who either A, used a bot, um, or got back door straight from mm-hmm. Nike. And yeah. that I think is the frustrating part. And that's the part that Nike doesn't, they never addressed fully is yeah. this, yeah, you know, and, and things like that. Um, because there's never, there's never a clear cut, you know, obviously mm-hmm. there was the whole, you know, nepotism baby who was using mom's credit card. And obviously right. Nike had to say something cause they were right. like, okay, <laughs> you know, we're, uh, but, paper trails getting a little too warm boys. <laughs> You know, um, but yes, I agree. Yes. The big corporation does not care that you did not get the pair of shoes. They don't care who gets the pairs of shoes. They don't care if you got to pay resell for the pair of shoes. They've already made their money. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I agree. They don't care. And we talk about a lot. Obviously, they are purposely restricting the amount of product because fewer shoes creates more hype, um, which is more excitement, which is free press. Yep. Yeah. They don't care who gets the shoes, but they no. want to make sure that not everyone gets the shoes. So 100%. I think that has just like, we're getting like true confessionals now, but like <laughs> for me, that is the thing over the past few months that has like kind of made this whole hobby, obsession, passion, whatever you want to call it, like kind of just honestly depressing and sad of yeah. like getting super tired of the trend of like, again, summarize the whole episode here. Here's a sneaker that's coming out in seven months, right? Because now we're getting Mm -hmm. leaks of it. Okay, well, I can either, you know, if it's not that great, I'll forget about it. If it's really good, okay. Now it's time to hype myself up for seven months because, like, I got to have this. I got to have this. And it gets closer. And you're, I got to have this. I got to have this. Everyone on Instagram has it. I see everyone with their early pairs. I see all the YouTubers doing early reviews, right? Come Mm -hmm. time to get it. Impossible to touch. Impossible to touch. Okay. Okay. I'm really frustrated by that experience. Am I spending three to four X the retail price to now get them resell? How many times can I do that? And so I'm just like, I feel like I'm just honestly at the point where like, I am not allowing myself to get that emotionally excited about sneakers no. anymore. Cause I can't, but I like, and all of that with like, you know, first world problems, crocodile teals over here. Obviously I think you and I are both at points where it's like, we have so many sneakers and stuff that we loved and have wanted forever that like, again, yeah, it's like, I don't need every new pair that comes out, but that's what makes it even tougher though. Is that like for a pair to come out that gets me so excited is rare, but to go through all that just to not get it is like the high, the, uh, the highs are higher, I guess, you know, and it's like, you know, just even greater heights to fall from. Yeah. I, I definitely treat, uh, my enjoyment for shoes now is very much window shopping. Yeah. I'll see it. I go, that looks great. I hope I see someone out of shake back with it. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. and it, and it does seem, I don't know if it's just being in the sneaker culture for as long as we have, or being in our thirties, but it almost seems like there's just really, there's just like two camps now of, mm-hmm. of enjoying sneakers. There's the everyday kind of guy, Mm-hmm. or everyday kind of gal who's just enjoying sneakers, goes through this whole frustrating process, never gets the shoes, always sees it, gets hyped, never gets it. Do I want to pay? Is it worth $500, $600? No. Um, and then there's the people who get the sneakers all the time, either mm-hmm. um, you know through hookups or connections or whatever it may be. How excited, how excited, you know, I, I feel like all, everyone in the sneaker world is just losing interest in it mm. because it's no longer spe- shoes aren't you're not really excited when shoes come out because you're just going to get it 
Yeah. You got your connect at whatever company or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. So you know you're going to get the shoe. So I don't really need to get excited for it. And also I got hundreds of pair that aren't mm-hmm. even at my house. They're in storage and things like that. Or you got people like us who are like, I'm never going to get it. So why really get that excited for it? I just feel like the way that sneakers releasing now and things like that, it's just so much just it is like a Black Mirror episode. You just yeah. live vicariously through your screen. Right, you just exactly. Look yeah. at, you look at the Instagram pages who get hooked up, and you're like, mm-hmm. yep. That they look cool. really nice. That's a great story. Oh, you know? Hey, do you want to watch this video of a super famous athlete with hundreds of pairs of shoes that they didn't pay for? It's like, not anymore. <laughs> when I was 20, can 100%. I, can 100%. I tell you now. what's really funny? <laughs> This is not going to, there's no point in me holding my phone up to the screen, but I have to do it. It's just so funny that you would say it because we did not talk about this, but like the story of like, that shoe's really cool. I hope I see someone wearing it at Shake Back. Here's my picture of someone wearing the airship every game <laughs> at Shake Back from, yeah. from this, uh, from this past Sunday and just seeing them. There and again, go. literally having that moment like, oh, they do look really good. I do still really, really want them. But again, I, I tr- at least try to get a little bit better now of like, but if I don't get them, Boo who I have 60 pairs of shoes I could still pick exactly. from that, was very that true. like, you know, a lot of them I would have killed to have. So it was very true. Yeah. All, on that note, last thing I'll say, you do you know the scene from the office where I think it's Andy Bernard at the end? He says, I wish there was a way to know you were in the good times while good you were times. still in them. Yeah. If like we could go back and tell ourselves, call it five, six years ago, though. And if you're yeah. listening and this is you who like going to the mall and seeing the latest not even it's not a collab it's not a it's not a quick strike but just a good general release colorway of an nmd and Mm. being like yo should i should i not because when you're just building your collection everything is exciting right everything is exciting oh man that nmd era though that was a hot one before nmds for me it was skate highs before skate highs it was Adidas tubular dooms, which no one will remember. And if you do, you'll be like, why yeah. were you interested in that shoe? I still stand by it, honestly. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of, again, it's very first world problems when you get to a collection like this. It's there's very little stuff that still piques your interest enough to squeeze a spot yeah. on the shelf or kick something else off the shelf. And then most of the time, what that product is, is the same thing that billions of other people want. So. Round and round we go, I guess, you know, <laughs> another episode. Woo. Mm. So on that note, hit the comments down below. Let us know how you feel about just, I guess, the state of sneakers right now, the state of the Shunion, as it were. A little callback for everyone there. Um, Tanner, we, we got we to gotta put a poll on the Spotify or a mm-hmm. Q&A. What do we want to give people the option of? What do we want to ask people? We want to ask people maybe does Nike care about stopping bots? Does Nike care? Uh, If is that too easy? Yes or no. Do we want to put a Q and a open-ended? I would, I I would want to know how, how many more failed sneaker releases will it take before you interest you seriously look at bots? That's like, Oh, okay. Bots even specifically. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. We're going to run that on crashes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you Google? Nike bots, <laughs> Nike bots. Yeah. Okay. We're going to run that one on Spotify. Maybe we'll also throw that one go. on like an Instagram story. That'll be a good one. Bam. So thank you everyone for checking out another episode of shoe podcast. We're going to tell you all the places you can find all of our links online at shoe podcast.com. You can catch us on Instagram at shoe podcast. Spoiler. Most of these are going to be, you know, TikTok at shoe podcast. We've got some cute little videos there. Leave a comment. You want to see Tanner dancing. Uh, youtube.com forward slash at shoe podcast. Maybe you're watching this video there right now. Hit the subscribe button. You should be. And lastly, you can support us over at patreon.com forward slash shoe podcast. Very little money, very little money, early access Light. to the episodes. Light. Show some support for your boys. We greatly appreciate it. This has been another episode of shoe podcast. We will be back next week and I will let the cat out of the bag here with a very special one. It's going to be a fun celebration to hang out. Uh, I really want to do a YouTube live because it is our four year anniversary of doing the podcast and episode 150 big milestone episode. So I'm thinking next week, I think, yeah, it's been a while since we've done a YouTube live. Maybe we'll see about Instagram live. I don't know, but 
That'll be the plan. Come hang out with us. Come celebrate. We'll talk about some of our favorite memories from the last year of doing this fun show. Mm. Love it. Tanner, before we go, anything you got for the people? Um, I got two things. Hit them. First, talk about your good days. When you have a good day, mm. say it a thousand times. Mm. Especially if you have, uh, you know, if you struggle with some of that mental health, mm-hmm. it's very easy to focus on the negatives, even the small things. You can blow it up. So anytime you have a good day, even a good day, say it a thousand times. Love have it. someone tell you to stop saying it. That's sure that's how much you should be saying it. Uh, and number two, uh, go buy this Simply Check strawberry yogurt thing. So good. Hang on. Hang on. Are they paying us? Are they paying you? If they're paying you and not us, I take issue, and that's getting scrapped from the episode right here. Nah, this is just free. This is just free. These little yogurt pieces, dog, oh, they're so good. Chex does not care who their customer is. They don't care if you get the product or not. Oh, they you made thought their it was, money. You thought it was only Nike? Oops, anti-corporation shoe podcast. They made their money. <laughs> oh, too funny. Too funny. All right. No. Once again, thank you everyone for checking out another episode of Shoe Podcast. I forget. Do we say our names at the end? I'm your co-host, Ryan Landry. I'm your co-host, Tanner Young. Catch you all next week.